This is the video lecture on pensions and retirement. When you talk about pensions and retirement plans, there are many different options and many different types of plans. And we're going to talk about those different plans in this video, talk about some of the characteristics, and also a little bit about what makes them so challenging to account for. Now, some of the plans are called a defined contribution plan. And there are many different plans that fall under this particular category. In a defined contribution plan, the amount of money that's put into the plan is a defined amount or a specific percentage. And what is unknown is what benefit will be received by the retiree as they retire. And the reason that's uncertain is because of risk. It really depends on what they invest the money in. But like I said, in this type of plan, the only thing that's clearly defined is what is being contributed and put into the plan. So of all the different types of defined contribution plans, there are four that are probably the most common. And those would be the 401k, 403b, IRA, and Roth IRA. We're going to talk about each one of these. So the 401k plan. This plan gets its name from the Income Tax Code. It's section 401 paragraph K. That is the specific area that gives the basis for this type of plan. And in this plan, the employee is going to contribute a defined amount. So that's why it's a defined contribution plan. It's going to be a percentage of their salary. And depending on their employer, in some cases, the employer will sometimes match the contribution. And that's done to encourage the employees to participate in the plan and also to provide a benefit to the employees. Now, the employee can then choose different investment options. And they have different portfolios they can invest the money in. Some of it is risky. Some of it's not risky. And, of course, any for-profit business can potentially offer this plan. But the way it works is it is a defined contribution and the money being invested is tax-free. Then you have a slight variation on that plan, which is called the 403B plan. And this also gets its name from the tax code. This one is Section 403, Paragraph B. It's essentially the same as a 401K. Really, the difference here is that this business would be a nonprofit. That's really the only difference. Then you have the IRA plan, and that stands for Individual Retirement Account. An individual retirement account, a person is going to contribute a set amount of money to the plan every year. Again, they're going to have different options as to how the money is to be invested, but it is a specific amount, and it's tax-free. In fact, 401k, 403b, and IRA are all tax-free when the money goes in. But then you have the Roth IRA, and the Roth IRA is a little different when compared to the traditional IRA. The difference is the taxes are paid on the money when it is contributed to the plan, but the good news then is that no taxes are paid at retirement. But again, it's defined benefit, or defined contribution rather, because it is the actual amount being contributed that is a set amount. Now, another classification would be a set of defined benefit plans. These plans are a different classification because what's defined in these plans are the benefits that the employee receives at retirement. And any business that offers this type of plan represents an obligation. The employer is obligated to fulfill this promise and pay these particular amounts of benefits at retirement. That type of plan is really no longer very common because a lot of businesses are hesitant to make such an obligation. And these are the types of plans that are very difficult to account for. The reason is because you never necessarily know at what exact age the person's going to retire. And then when they do retire, you don't know how long they're going to live. So you really don't know what amount of benefits are going to have to be paid out. So in order to understand that, 
that's where we have the actuaries. And the actuaries, these are agencies that help us to estimate life expectancy. So the calculations and the percentages that the actuaries provide us will help us estimate how much money should be set aside so that what that way we'll have enough money to pay this future obligation. And of course that's difficult to account for because of what we call the moving target effect. In other words, in our workforce we always have different employees. We have people who are new that are coming in. We have people that are going out. Their ages are different. Their health issues are different. And of course every year life expectancy changes so things like that change so it's constantly in motion but we always use the information from those actuaries to help us make decisions about how much money is going to be needed to fund the obligation of that plan